This video will review over the various bones associated with the cranial skeleton. As we look at the skull, and we'll start off with this one over here to the, uh, the left. When we look at this one right here, the first thing we're going to look at is you'll notice that this bone right here is the frontal bone. Now the frontal bone does move on into and at the top part of the orbital cavity of the, um, the eye. And as we continue, we'll notice that right in this area right there, we're going to have our nasal bone going down. Right within, we're going to have our vomer bone on either side of the vomer bone in this area. We're going to have the maxillae. Now notice that the maxillae also forms the roof of the mouth. So if you open your mouth, put your tongue to the top, that tough bone that you feel is the maxillae. Down here at the bottom, we have the mandible. Notice on the mandible, we have these little holes right here and right there. Those are called the mental foramina. And those uh, have the um, trochlear nerve that is deadened when you go to the doctor. So if you receive a shot from, from the dentist, that is the nerve that is being deadened. We will turn our skeleton to the side. When we move it to the side, what we'll now not notice is we have right here, we have the uh, cheekbone called the zygomatic bone. Right here, we have the temporal bone. Now, moving across, we have a process. Processes are named for the location they're going to, the bone they're going to, not the bone they're associated with. So here we have the temporal bone, and right across here, we have the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Right here, we have the zygomatic bone. This little section right there is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. On the side, you'll also notice that we have various bones that meet within the eye socket. Uh, we just mentioned that the um, frontal bone is at the top. Right here at the bottom edge area, we will have the maxillae. Right across here, we also have two bones. This first bone right there, that is the ethmoid bone. We'll look at that in the interior of the skull in a moment. Right up here is the lacrimal bone. That's where we have our lacrimal uh, ducts for our tear ducts. And at the very back, we will have our sphenoid bone, which is part of this right here. This is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. As we continue, Right in this area, right along here, we're going to have our parietal bone. Now that parietal bone is on either side of the skull, so you will see it both here and here. Moving to the back, that's going to leave us right there. That's going to be the occipital bone. We're going to take this skeleton, we're going to just flip it right on over. And when we flip the skeleton over, and we'll just move to this one, it'll set up better. When we flip it over, we'll notice that the large hole that we see that's going to be the foramen magnum. It basically means large hole. On either side of the foramen magnum, we have the occipital condyles. Now, this right here is what rests on the atlas of the uh, vertebrae that we discussed in a different video. Again, we talked about the maxillae. That's being this location right here. We can also, along this area here, we can see the underside of the sphenoid bone. So do notice that as you rotate your bones around, you will see various structures. Um, during our rotation. We're going to flip this little guy right over. We're going to look at the interior structures. As we look at the interior of it, again right in this area we're going to have our frontal bone and then if we come over in this area we're going to still have our temporal bone. Right along here we're going to have our sphenoid bone. Now if we take our finger and we touch the greater wing of the sphenoid on this side and we bring our fingers together you'll see where the sphenoid bone is on the interior of the skull. Um, Right here, this is the ethmoid bone. Now the ethmoid bone on a true skeleton is going to have little holes there. And anytime we have holes, those are called foramina. The little holes are olfactory foramina, where the olfactory nerve from the brain will go down through those holes, down into the uh, nose, so that one can uh, sense smell. The area that sticks up is called the crystagaly which literally means coxcomb. Uh, they thought that it resembled the, the head of a rooster. And then the um, plate here that has the holes in it is called the cribriform plate. Now if we continue back right here, we're going to have our cella tersica. Uh, they believed it looked like a Turkish saddle. Right in that area right there is where the pituitary gland that's attached to the brain will sit. And that's why when one has surgery on the pituitary gland, they have to go back up through the eye sockets right through there to reach it 
because otherwise they would have to go from the top of the skull all the way through to the brain. So that gives a direct access. Again, we can see the um, foramen magnum. We can see the um, occipital bone. Uh, right here, all of this area that we're looking at, that is the sphenoid bone. With the sphenoid bone, um, they typically thought it looked like a bat's wing. And so that's where it got its location. The only additional thing that I would tell you is that when we look at the back of the skull, and when we look at it and we see this bump right here by the occipital bone, that is called the um, external occipital protuberance. We move over here to the side of the bone, and when we move to the side, let's see if we can find a good view of this. This, one, this bone right here, this skeleton has it. Right here we have our external auditory uh, canal. You can see the styloid process right here, and then you can see the mastoid process right, right along there. I would spend time studying the skull as you prepare for the lab practical. Roughly 90% of the difficulty of the lab practical is covering the skull. So do spend time with the skull.